Okay, so I just want to do a really quick video. I had jokingly said to somebody one time, you know, he, he couldn't decide what color LED he wanted in his meter. And I jokingly said, ah, why don't you get a color changing one? He's like, well, what do you mean? I was like, well, you get a color changing LED. It's actually three LEDs in one. And it's a uh, red, green, and blue. Your primary colors. And it just changes gradually between those colors. He's like, huh? Oh, well, I'll get some. So, you know, I go to order them. Now, these come pre-made. Let me just show you. Uh, they come pre-made, already have a dropping resistor in them, from China, of course, um, you yeah. know. And I buy in bulk, so like I said, I got 500 of them because in large quantities they cost almost absolutely nothing. Um, and I just have it in, in a meter here to kind of, to demonstrate what it actually looks like in use. Now, of course, this is a mobile meter. So it always starts on red, and then it will cycle through those three colors, um, and, it's, and it doesn't just go blue straight to green straight to it actually varies the three sometimes all three colors will be on and then only two and then only one and it's it just kind of gradually and slowly changes it, it may seem random but if you watch it long enough there is an actual pattern to it but uh, now in the camera you know, i'm looking in the viewfinder you know and then looking right past the camera at the bench down here in the camera it looks blindingly bright in person to me personally, and I don't like extremely bright, blinding, you know, meters and, uh, you know, channel displays. It actually is almost perfect. Um, yeah, in the camera, it really looks, and I'm sure in a video, once it gets uploaded, it'll look blindingly bright. But honestly, it's not. Actually, it's it looks really good. It's bright, don't get me wrong, but it's not one of those obnoxiously bright ones. So, there you can see what it looks like installed in a meter. Um... And actually, if you look at this out, in case you're not familiar, because there's actually, you can see it right there, there's three balls of light. There's green, red, and blue. So you can actually see that there's actually three LEDs in there. And you'll see there's the, you know, one there, there's one there, and another one down here. It's the blue, the red just went away, then the green will probably come in. Yeah, there's the green coming in. Or actually, that's the blue. I'm looking at it in the viewfinder, and it looks different. <laughs> it's the green down here, blue back there, and red over here. Well, like I say, it cycles between those three. It'll have different ones on, but there is a pattern to it. Now, that's the one problem with this LED. This is a narrow uh, viewing angle LED. So this LED, if you notice, has a domed lens. And the camera is not focusing because I don't have enough light here because I have my normal over-the-bench light turned off. There we go. So you can see that clearly has a well-defined domed lens. Now, normally what I use is flat tops. And a flat top has just that. It's, it's perfectly flat across the top. It doesn't have a dome. And those usually have a 120-degree viewing angle. Really wide. Now... In a mobile meter, it doesn't make a huge difference. I still prefer the, the, the wide-angle ones, or the flat tops, but these, as you saw, works just fine. Um, the problem with these narrow field, uh, or narrow viewing angle LEDs is if you use them in a base station style uh, meter, now some, some base stations have small meters, but the ones that have a large, you know, fairly large meter face, the, the lights are usually fairly close right behind it. The problem with that is when you put the LED there, what's that going to do? It's going to create what I call a hot spot. So you end up with this blindingly bright light right in the middle of your meter, and it's dark at the outside edges. Now, it's not actually dark. It just looks dark to you because it, it's so, you know, unreasonably bright in the, me in the middle of the meter. Uh, now... If this is the only thing you can get, I hadn't actually planned on doing this, you can actually turn this LED into a flat top. And all you need is a file. <laughs> I actually used to do this years ago when a lot of LEDs that I, I wanted to use were not available in flat top. Now, of course, you don't want to file the whole way down into the LED, but you're not going to hurt it by filing the, the whole end of it off there. Because you have to remember, the flat top LEDs are... <laughs> They're very short to start with because they don't have that dome. 
and actually with the end by filing it you actually kind of fog up the end of the lens so it makes for a it almost kind of makes a good diffuser I guess you could say so you almost you're also you're you know multi <laughs> you're doing a multiple process here you're making a wide angle LED and <coughs> or wide angle viewing angle and and then let me vacuum this dust up right And then on top of it, you're actually kind of creating a get this over in the light a little bit. You want a focus camera? Focus, focus, focus. Yeah, I've just got this camera completely screwed up <laughs> with the light being behind me. It doesn't know what the hell to do. <laughs> I always have the light overhead on. But ah. back on there, little guy. Oh, yeah, see that? No more hot spot. So if you ever, if you ever have, you know, even if you just happen to have some of a certain color or something like this, and you just want to widen the field of view up on it, all you need is a file. Hell, you could use a fingernail file for that matter. It's not like it needs to be a metal file. It's just a piece of plastic. <laughs> so, you know. That's an easy way to turn a narrow viewing angle LED into a wide angle. Um, now I can still see some tiny little hot spots. I might need to... Yeah, I still actually have a little bit of a bevel there. I'd need to file just a little bit more off. But for the most part, yeah, it's only tiny little spots. It shows up a lot worse in the camera than it does in person. But uh, I doubt it'll make much difference in the at least in the mobile meter, eh, still looks about the same. But uh, there you go. There's just the color changing LEDs. Um, they really actually look pretty good to me. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised. Like I say, I'm usually not much. In, I'm just. I'm an old-fashioned, you know, kind of warm uh, yellow light bulb glow person. As a matter of fact, I actually have LEDs like this. They're not color changing. They're actually. Uh, what they call natural white so they actually look like a more like the sun kind of a yellowish tinge to it it looks more like a real light bulb As a matter of fact i've installed them in people's radios before that said they you know they don't like the blindingly bright lights now i was like well i got the led for you i said it's it looks trust me when you get your radio back you'll think i left the light bulb in it because that's exactly what it looks like it looks like a normal light bulb it's it they they got the color you know, the Kelvin just right on it, <laughs> you know, the, the actual color spectrum. But, uh, so there you go, there's a color changing LED, um, what they do, you can see how fast they change. Um, you can actually, before I filed the end of the lens off, you can actually see there's three LEDs in there. Really, of course, they're really close together inside of there. And uh, if you want to take a regular LED that has a narrow viewing angle and turn it into a wide viewing angle, a couple seconds with a file and you can fix that really quick.